Hi everybody, in this episode of Flip Teacher Professional Learning, we're going to be taking a look at each of the question types in Google Forms, uh, how you can use them. Now on the screen you can see two Google Forms, or actually it's the same form but in different formats. The left hand side of the screen is the Google Form in editing mode, the right hand side of the screen is preview mode, and what it will actually look like to your respondents. So what I've done is I've set up a, a, a dummy form just to give you a bit of an idea of what this can look like. And on the dummy form, I've got one of each question type that we can have a look at so you can see what they look like. Now a blank form, a default form will look like this. And to add new questions, to change details, to add new questions, you click on this little plus sign here, dumps in a new one and you select what question type you want. To give it a title, the form a title, you click up here uh, or you can click in here as well. So if I just put in that, if I then come at the top, it will pull whatever I've put in there automatically. Very brief. So let's go back to the other screen. So here we go. So left hand side is the editing mode, right hand side is preview mode. So I've given it a title. I've given it a brief description as well that allows respondents to know what the purpose of the form is for. Now the first question type we've got is a short answer. You can see what that looks like over here. It's very simple, what's your name? And now, one of the things with Google Forms is that there are typically, with most of the question types, uh, data validation and description options. So this allows you to put in a description of what the question is. Data validation is a very important option for some question types if you're looking for an email uh, address, for example. So what is your name? So short answer text. Um, again, data validation, let's turn that on. So I can turn this on to be a particular response type, number, text, a length, uh, or an expression. Let's go with text, contains, doesn't contain, email address or a URL. And you can then put in exactly what it is that you're looking for. So you might be looking for a email address, for example, custom error text. You can put in exactly what the error message is. Length, you can have minimum character count, maximum character count. There's a lot of options there. I'll leave you to explore those in your own time. The next question we've got is, uh, whose class were you in last year? This is a multiple choice option. So you can see what that looks like over here. Now I've added in an other option, which looks like this. So if someone chose that, they would select that and they'd then be able to type in what their other is. And you can see here that I haven't actually put a response in yet, so it doesn't count as being answered. And so it pops up, this is a required question because I started the question. Uh, multiple choice, again, you've got description. You can also set this one to go to a particular section based on the answer that the respondent chooses. Now, I'll talk a little bit more about what that is uh, and how you can use that in a later video, but that can be a really powerful tool. You can also shuffle the order of the options in the video in the uh, list if you need to. With multiple choice, I'd be wary of having too many options, any more than say five or maybe six at the outside. Um, I would probably consider going to a drop down box instead, purely so that the question doesn't take up the entire screen, uh, particularly if someone's on a mobile device. So, moving along, the next one is a checkbox response. You can see what that looks like over here. Again, I've put in a description. We again have the validation options. So, with this one, with a checkbox, you might want to want respondents to choose up to three, three answers, for example. Uh, or at least three answers or exactly three answers. And you can do that by simply turning the data validation on, selecting whichever one of these responses is the one you want, put in the number you want. So if it's two, just put in two, and it will then force the respondent to choose uh, the number of answers based on whatever you set for the data validation. Moving on, don't forget you can pause and rewind this video at any point, of course. Uh, moving on, the next one we've got is, I think I set this one up as a, yes, it's a drop down box. So this is what it looks like on the editing screen. But if you have a look over here, this is what it will look like for the respondent. So this is what I mean about it not taking up the whole screen. It's one line for the respondent. Much, much better if they're on a device. They can simply click on the drop down box and see the options. Whereas if it's a checkbox or a multiple choice, if you've got you know, 20 different options, for example, that's going to take up a significant amount of the screen space. So again, you've got description options. You've got um, go to section based on answer options. We'll look at that later on. The next one, this is one that I've not really used too often and I've only put it in here so you can see what it looks like. This is a linear scale response. This allows you to put in, I'll put in a blank one so you can see what it looks like raw. Uh, here we go, linear scale. So this is what it looks like as the raw option. So you've got your labels, which are your basically your column headings. 
and then you can set for the uh, your row headings rather and then for the column headings you can set a number scale from zero zero or one all the way up to ten so let's change that there and that allows you to differentiate or give people greater scope for responding you go to number five how much do you enjoy PE one means you do not like PE at all and they can simply rate it one to five and so on the next one again is one that is quite useful in terms of it saves a lot of space it's very easy to look at um, and it's called a multiple choice grid so this is what it looks like when it's done so over here we've got row headings and then we've got column headings next to it. So the column headings you can put in there whatever you want, whether it's a number system, whether it's not at all blank, 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 uh, very confident is entirely up to you. But I would very much, I would very much recommend that you go through and that you have a bit of a play around with that purely because it is a very useful option. It can be, there we go there. So you can see what that looks like now. The data validation options are a little bit different on this one. So this one is limit to one response per column. Now keep in mind that the columns are our vertical options. So limit to one response per column, that would mean that you can only have one incredibly confident. So you would need to consider whether you want to structure it like this or whether you want to flip it and have the confidence ratings as the row headings and have the subjects as the column headings. Again, it comes down to how you want to structure that or just don't turn that on. Next one is a simply date response. That's the option here, it's a date. Data validation for that, we have we have a description. You can include the time and you can turn whether it has the year on or off. So month, day or month, day, year uh, or month, day, year with a time. It's up to you, obviously, how you, how you structure that. Um, this is what it looks like over here, number seven. The next one is the is a time function. Again, it's right down the very bottom. Description, time. So you can also put a duration in. So you might want to use how long do you spend doing something and it allows you to put in a duration system. That's what it looks like over here to the respondent. The last one that I've got in is the uh, paragraph response. So this is a long response. Uh, so there are a number of different ways where you could use this, but you've got some basic data validation tools again, description data validation. You can set a minimum character count, maximum character count, and how you structure that obviously is up to you. Uh, so that's a very, very basic overview of Google Forms and the question types. We'll go into more detail about how to use some of these question types and some of the other features of Google Forms in the next video, but until then, thanks for watching.